he got, you know, his wife told me he got hit really hard in the chest when the airbag deployed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does he have any survival photographer? He's got a cervical collar. The paramedics, oh, someone took it off. The paramedics had put on a cervical collar here. We should probably put that And I want you to listen on the right side and the left side and compare. Okay. All right. So describe to me, so you're hearing what's called unilateral breath sounds or, or potentially decreased or absent breath sounds on the right side. What, what, what other physical findings do you have there? How would you describe that anatomically? Fusion, potentially, yeah? Abrasion, hard to really say. But what, what, what would you call it in layman's terms? A bruise. Okay. The medical term for a bruise is called ecchymosis. All right. So we would say he probably has an ecchymotic area or a bruise supramammary in the midclavicular area in the right upper chest, okay? All right, so, and we're seeing unilateral breath sounds. And what were you guys noticing about his, about his respirations? They're fast, right? So he's tachypnic, okay? So fast breathing is called tachypnea, okay? Let's look at his vital signs. This is his monitor over here. What do you guys notice about his vital signs? You already put oxygen on him, and it's, did his oxygen saturation, that the one in yellow is the oxygen saturation. Did that get better? Yes. A little bit, but what should that number be? Should be like All 95 right, number in white is his respiratory rate. What do you think your normal respiratory rate is? Mm -hmm. Anywhere from like 80 to, tw eight, excuse me, 8 to 20, okay, um, depending on whether you're asleep, awake, etc. So 50 is quite fast for anyone, all right? Even for a baby, that would be fast. His heart rate is 109. Fast. And that number in red, yeah. the one that's flashing, is his systolic blood pressure, the upper number. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the lower number, 39, is the diastolic blood pressure. In parentheses is the mean arterial blood pressure. Okay. So what, what did Dr. Lum say your normal blood pressure is usually in an adult? 120 over 80 or a little bit less. Yeah. So that's pretty low. All right. So he's hypotensive. All right. So he's tachycardic, tachypnic, hypotensive. And how about, what would we call his oxygen saturation to be low? Do you know what the term for that is? Hypoxia. Hypoxia, right? Hypoxia. Low oxygen, hypoxia. Hemothorax, potentially, or blood accumulation in the thorax. Anything else? So there could be blood in the, in the thorax. What else could be there? Flail chest. Air, flail chest. If you had rib fractures, potentially, yeah. If there's air there, what would we call that? Pneumothorax, right? Pneumo, air in the chest, hemo, blood in the chest, okay? So you're absolutely right. This could be any of those things, all right? So I'm really worried about this guy. The fact that he's got low blood pressure and high heart rate, this is pretty, this is something we need to take care of with a needle. These are real needles, so be careful not to stick yourself. A needle with a catheter over it, just a regular old plastic catheter, flimsy. So when you put an IV in someone, you poke the vein with the needle, but then you withdraw the needle and only the plastic catheter stays in the vein. This is going to be the same thing. We need the sharp needle to be able to puncture through the fluid. All right? So uh, you guys are all going to get a chance to do this procedure, but I don't want you to worry too much about your success rate, okay? The, the important point here today is to feel for the surface anatomy. Feel on yourself, feel on the mannequins. I want you to feel for where the clavicle is, and then feel for the interspaces, okay? So the clavicle is here. And why, does it, why is it difficult to feel the first rib? Yeah, it curves up underneath the clavicle, right? So it kind of traverses like that. So you're going to easily feel the clavicle as a patient. And then probably the next rib you feel down is going to be the second rib. All right? So you're going to probably go, you can go either above the second rib or above the third rib. You can kind of go in either of these spaces. Above, here. above where I feel the rib, okay? Now, if you, if you don't have the back of your catheter on, when you go in, you're going to puncture through the parietal you hear that hiss? That's the air coming out. That's very realistic. In a real patient, you'll hear that pshhh, and that's how you know you're about to real sound. This is, this is exactly what you would hear. Okay? Going straight. Going straight. You go, so you're feeling for the rib. 
you're taking the needle, this is called the bevel of the needle. That's that open part of the needle right there. See how the needle is open? Because you want you want that to point upward, okay? So you're feeling for the rib, and we're going right above where you feel the top of the rib, straight down. And as soon as you hear that hiss, you know you've gone deeper, okay? You're not going to hear the hiss over on some hands. Don't feel too badly about that. Some of the last group had difficulty even with this one, but more important is the anatomy, okay? And then you would take the needle out, Okay, and you could leave this, this part in. And if this is under significant pressure here, what you're going to see is that, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, okay? But sometimes you have to pull back on the needle, but if it's under a lot of pressure, the plunger might actually press itself. This, this guy's under pressure. That's not gonna, you're not going to see that with the cement over there, okay? But I want you guys to focus not so much on the procedure, but more on the surface anatomy of feeling for where the, the intercostal spaces are. So go ahead and... Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Another one there. Yep, I'm going to show you what the x-ray would look like. But um, So B, we just take the um, take the plastic, that's like the cap. Yeah, so take that off. So Victoria, that, that would work. The only issue is that you now have the needle in there. So what would normally happen is that you would take the needle out and you would leave the plastic cap in. So try, try one more time. Draw the needle off.